Yeah, let's talk about the effects of an expansionary fiscal policy in this setting. So, um, once more, the equilibrium is given in point A, um, upward sloping ISZZ curve, a vertical line for the LMZZ curve. And we want to find out whether an increase in government spending is able to affect the GDP level. This would be nice because of the fact that uh, right now the economy is in a very severe recession. Unemployment rates are high, 25% unemployment rate. So um, then it would be very nice in case that this expansionary fiscal policy is effective. In case that we have no clue which curve shifts in which directions, we have to think about the equilibrium conditions. Let's have a look. Um, slide number 13, we find the money market equilibrium condition. Can you see government spending here? No. In case that there is no government spending included, then the LMZZ curve will not shift. Can you see government spending here? Yes, there is government spending. So in case that government spending increases, the right-hand side of this equation increases. Y also has to increase so that the equal sign holds and the ISZ, ISZ curve shifts to the right. This is also mentioned in the second bullet. The ISZ curve shifts to the right if government spending increases. Let's go back to slide 23. So the ISZZ curve shifts to the right in case that government increases government spending. We have to look for the new intersection, which is point number B. As you can see here, expansionary fiscal policy is not able to increase output. Output stays the same as before. Why is that? Why? Does this increase in demand does not lead to increase in GDP? Uh, we have to think about the second variable here, which is also reacting. Um, the exchange rate is decreasing from the level A to the level B. And due to this decrease, we have a negative expenditure switching effect. Exports will decrease, imports will increase. And therefore, this exchange rate effect has a negative effect on the demand for domestic goods. We have to think about the two effects which affect the demand for domestic goods. Government increases government spending, and this increases the demand for domestic goods. And uh, the exchange rate effect is that this leads to a decrease in demand for domestic goods via a negative expenditure switching effect. And these two effects, they cancel each other. So in the end, uh, expansionary fiscal policy is not effective with respect to increasing output. So let's sum up. An increase in government spending leads to an exchange rate induced crowding out effect of net exports. We have no effect on the GDP level. Fiscal policy is ineffective to stimulate the economy and to reduce the unemployment rate. But fiscal policy is not neutral, like the composition of GDP will change. There'll be a larger piece of the cake which goes to the government and a smaller piece of the cake, which goes to net exports. So um, the increase in government spending has an effect on international trade. The increase in government spending has an effect on the current account balance. There'll be a deterioration of the current account balance. Exports are um, down, imports are up. The current account balance deteriorates. We have real effects. The composition of GDP changes. Let's also here try to um, confirm the graphical analysis and the results 
from the graphical analyzers by computing multipliers. The effect on GDP um, is not there, so we expect that the income multiplier dy dg should be equal to zero. Is this worthy of the case? So let's compute the income multiplier after a fiscal policy is implemented and we expect from the graphical results that dy dg should be equal to zero. So now it is the case that only the government increases government spending, dg is positive, um, the solution vector only contains the change of that variable which is affected. So um, let's compute the income multiplier. Income, the change in income, is located on the first position of the vector of the two unknowns. Therefore, Kramer's rule tells you take the solution vector and insert the elements into the first column of the coefficient matrix and compute the determinant of the change coefficient matrix and divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix. So here, once more, there are two lines. The lines do not indicate absolute signs, but they indicate that we should compute a determinant. Once more, this is not a square bracket here, it's just a line. So let's compute these relationships, dg times 0, minus 0 times minus nx3, and then in the denominator 1 minus c1 plus nx1 times 0, minus d1 minus nx3. So the income multiplier is dy over dg is equal to 0. Like we have to divide this relationship here by dg. We have to put dg on the other hand side of the equation. Then we get for the income multiplier dy over dg is equal to 0. We have no income effect but a complete exchange rate induced crowding out effect. There is no positive effect on GDP. In the last step of this chapter, we want to compute the exchange rate multiplier after a fiscal policy. We want to find out whether this relationship is negative so that when the government increases government spending, the exchange rate decreases. There is a negative relationship between these two um, macroeconomic variables. DG increases, DE decreases. So um, the change in the exchange rate is located on the second position in the vector of the two unknowns. Um, Therefore, Cromer's rule tells you take the solution vector and insert the elements into the second column of the coefficient matrix. We can find dg and 0 here in the second column and we should compute the determinant. So let's do that. Compute the determinant 1 minus c1 plus nx1 times 0 minus d1 dg in the denominator 1 minus c1 plus nx1 times 0 minus d1 times minus nx3. Here also we have uh, some zeros, so some terms will disappear when we multiply through by 0. Then we have a negative sign here, a negative sign there. These negative signs cancel out. Um, but there is one additional negative sign left in the numerator and this negative sign can be found here. When we put dg on the other hand side of the equation, we get de over dg is equal to minus from the numerator d1 over d1 nx3. D1 will cancel out, so in the end we get that DE over DG is equal to 
minus 1 over nx3, which is negative. So this negative sign has to be interpreted in the following way. In case that the government increases government spending, the exchange rate will decrease. So a negative relationship between these two macroeconomic variables. 